All right, welcome everyone to the March 2021 virtual field trip to North Chagrin Reservation. My name is Michelle Brocious and I am your BirdWalk leader this evening. I am also the WCAS board member and field trip co-coordinator. All right, so a little bit about uh, these field trips for those of you who have never attended before. So uh, in March, six participants independently visited North Chagrin Reservation in search of the target species red-winged blackbird. After visiting the location, participants report back to myself regarding their experience, submitting bird species lists, journaling, photographs, etc. I then compiled submitted items into a digital scrapbook that is published on our website and shared across our social media platforms. A virtual meetup, that's what we're having tonight, is held on the second Wednesday after the field trip month during which the scrapbook is presented and discussion is encouraged. So that's a little bit about uh, what you should expect this evening. All right, so a little bit about the location. Uh, since the 1920s, North Chagrin Reservation has been a special combination of outdoor recreation areas and wildlife sanctuaries. North Chagrin trails and picnic areas feature woodlands and wetlands as important characteristics of this large reservation. Located in Mayfield Village, Willoughby Hills, and Gates Mills, the reservation includes a nature center and nature education building. Sanctuary Marsh and Sunset Pond are both popular areas to observe waterfowl, and Squires Castle is an interesting historical site. And that paragraph was taken from the Cleveland Metro Parks website, North Chagrin Reservation page. Uh, additionally, access just south of Squires Castle off Chagrin River Road, Oxbow Lagoon is a separated wetland from the Chagrin River. The footprint of this biodiverse wetland marks a historic flow path of the river. And that's taken from the Cleveland Metro Parks Oxbow Lagoon page. And for a complete history of the reservation, including how land was acquired, a failed bid to connect both North and South Chagrin Reservations, and the opening of a trailside nature center, which is believed to be the first in the country, please visit the Case Western Reserve University Encyclopedia of Cleveland History, North Chagrin Reservation page. And then on the left hand side there, I included a picture that I took of the Oxbow Lagoon. And I just, uh, I, I love this location. The boardwalk with the natural wood around it is really, really cute. Uh, and that's where we, most of us began our field trip who attended. All right, so a little bit about the target species. Uh, the red-winged blackbird. So one of the most abundant birds across North America and one of the most boldly colored, the red-winged blackbird is a familiar sight atop cattails, along soggy roadsides, and on telephone wires. Glossy black males have scarlet and yellow shoulder patches. They can puff up or hide depending on how confident they feel. Females are a subdued streaky brown, almost like a large dark sparrow. Their early and tumbling song are happy indications of the return of spring. And that is the description about these birds, um, the, both the male and the female uh, red-winged blackbird from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And as you can see on the right-hand side, a picture of the male on the left and female on the right at North Sugar Reservation by Tom Fishburn. All right, so we're going to start with my my visit. I went pretty early in the month, uh, March 7th, and I saw a total of 21 species during my trip. So I visited both Oxbow Lagoon and Sunset Pond Sanctuary Marsh at North Chagrin Nature Center on March 7th, 2021. I arrived at Oxbow Lagoon at 9.21 a.m. where I met a friend, Amy, uh, the morning for the morning's excursion. The temperature was in the low 30s, we had never visited the site before and were pleasantly surprised by its beauty coupled with a charming boardwalk. The male red-winged blackbirds were out and singing their ukulele song, but were high up in the trees. Still, I counted six total during my visit that morning. The red-winged blackbird was actually my spark bird back in 2017 when I attended a bird walk during a women's retreat at the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I will always be thrilled to see and hear them. Uh, soon we heard a different call, the cuck, 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 cuck of a pileated woodpecker. I'm not going to actually try to sound like them, just so you know. Um, we backtracked a little toward the sound and were so lucky to see a beautiful female swoop in and climb around the several minutes on a dead tree that was split into a fork and had the pleasure of watching her leap from one side to the other. 
A uh, little bit of birding lingo. I mentioned spark bird. Well, that is the bird that ignites one's enthusiasm for birding. So a lot of times when someone gets into birding, it's because they just came across this one bird that really was fascinating to them and they just wanted to see more. And so they got a pair of binoculars and started birding. So that was mine. And the picture on the right-hand side there that I took of a red-winged blackbird at Oxbow Lagoon. And as you can see, it, it is high up in a dead tree. And that's, that's kind of where they all were. This was high up and didn't come very close. Okay, so here is the pileated woodpecker. Uh, I took a, a, a shot on the left-hand side just so you can kind of see uh, the two parts of the tree and you can see she is on the left side looking at the right side and then uh, the photo on the right is a closer up picture of the bird and then she's getting ready to jump to the other side and I didn't actually catch her she was too quick uh, jumping but she jumped to the other side in the middle picture she's on the right side of the tree and then um, from here she climbs up above this notch and you can see she's above that notch now peeking out All right, we stayed until the woodpecker decided to leave us, and then we made our way along the trail toward Old River Farm picnic area. There was an abundance of life along Lily Loop Trail, including black capped chickadee, red bellied woodpecker, downy woodpecker, tufted titmouse, dark eyed junco, and eastern bluebird. And as you can see, here are two pictures I took of the same uh, black capped chickadee one looking down and one looking up along the Lily Loop Trail. And then here are two red-bellied woodpecker. I believe these are different individuals along the Lovely Loop Trail. And then red squirrel. And again, these are different individuals as well. There were two red squirrels in the same tree and uh, I managed to get a picture of each. And so upon our return to Oxbow Lagoon, we came across a female American robin. However, I'm used to seeing much brighter robins and was momentarily confused about an identification until I got a better look. A male American robin soon showed himself to us in more vibrant, familiar colors. A turkey vulture was also spotted on the way out, soaring above. All right, so yeah, the picture on the left there, a very um, a just pale female American robin, more pale than I'm used to seeing the females. Usually for me, uh, where where I live, the females are exactly like this male, except the, the gray continues up and to make a complete gray head. Uh, it's still very light and this wasn't, I mean, this was pretty accurate to what I saw in real life. All right. After Oxbow Lagoon, Amy and I arrived at North Chagrin Nature Center at 10.53 a.m., and the temperature was now in the mid-30s. Two Cooper's hawks swooped in while we were still in the parking area, one juvenile and one mature. So on the left there is the juvenile, uh, and on the right is the mature adult Cooper's hawk at North Chagrin Nature Center parking lot. We started out at Sunset Pond, which provided us only with five Canada geese, two couples lazily napping, and then one random goose that noisily flew through, momentarily upsetting both couples. As we rounded behind the Nature Center towards Sanctuary Marsh, I spotted a white-breasted nuthatch. I was then delighted to finally get a good look at an American tree sparrow. The only other time I've ever seen one was back in 2018 on an Audubon led excursion when I was relatively new to birding. I happened to get 44 lifers on that trip and must admit the American tree sparrow I saw that day just did not stand out to me and went unappreciated. Therefore, this sighting had the same feeling as getting a lifer. I may have done a little dance. Actually, I did. Uh, but alas, no lifer award for me since it wasn't technically a true lifer. All right, also seen at Sanctuary Marsh were more red-winged blackbird. These were much closer to us than the birds at Oxbow Lagoon. Uh, downy woodpecker, black-capped chickadee, tufted titmouse, house sparrow, and white-throated sparrow. And on the right there, a photo of the American tree sparrow at Sanctuary Marsh. And then I captured it flew to a different place. Uh, this is actually on a fence, a wooden fence, and it turned around a little bit. And I took some pictures of it there. And then it flew down into some brush and it had was finding some seeds that it was eating. I don't have them in this picture, but it was eating seeds. 
here's a white-breasted nuthatch, and this is the same individual. It flew there for our feeders at the Nature Center, uh, at least in early March, they were still there. And so a lot of these birds were getting seed and, and taking them to the trees that were nearby. A house sparrow on the left, and uh, finally a male red-winged blackbird on the right at Sanctuary Marsh. And more red-winged blackbirds. Actually, this is the same individual. And there he is again, the same one, just hanging out on a cattail or reed and looking around and making his calls. And then a black-capped chickadee flew in and you know, perched on a reed and was looking around as well. And finally, the white-throated sparrow that I happen to see at Sanctuary Marsh. And then here's my bird list, <clears throat> 21 species. Uh, I always highlight notable species in red, and this is just what stands out to me. Uh, you might have different birds that you would highlight on your list that mean something to you. Um, I thought the Cooper's Hawk was really exciting. Of course, the Pileated Woodpecker, Eastern Bluebird, always a delight to see, American Tree Sparrow, and the Red Wing Blackbird, of course, since it is the target species of this trip. And then I included an additional photo of the American Tree Sparrow at Sanctuary Marsh on the left-hand side. All right, so Al Rand visited the reservation twice and logged 20 species. Uh, so he says, I made two trips to the Gates Mills Trailhead, March 11th and March 18th. Although I'm always prepared to bird, these trips are made with the intent to find salamanders. There are four or five species that will migrate in March. Weather needs to be warm and rainy, and it needs to be dark outside before they run. Salamanders migrate from their burrows to vernal pools to lay their eggs before returning to their burrows. In addition to salamanders, frogs are out for the same reason. Although the weather seemed favorable, the rain did not fall as expected. However, the amphibians were out. So he included here a picture of a Metro Park sign, uh, just, you know, closing the road for the migrating amphibians. And then a spring peeper on the left-hand side there at the Gates Mills Trailhead. And then these two pictures, a wood frog on the left, and then a red back salamander on the right at the Gates Mills Trailhead. Then he um, has a picture of an oil beetle species on the left and spotted salamander on the right, again at the Gates Mills Trailhead. And then a Jefferson salamander on the left and a unisexual hybrid mole salamander on the right at the Gates Mills Trailhead. So he had a lot of luck finding a lot of uh, diverse species of amphibians. And then although not photographed at North Sugar Reservation, this encounter with the, the spotted salamander, the wood frog stare down, uh, was a highlight of owl's amphibian migration observations this spring. So he sent me this picture and I, I wanted to include it because it is a really cool picture of uh, animal behavior. And then a bird and species list, since he did include his amphibians and the um, beetle. Uh, so the notable species from his list, the wood duck, um, American black duck, mallard, uh, and American black duck hybrid is always cool to see, eastern bluebird. So he didn't talk about these birds at all, but he did submit a list to me while he was um, out chasing amphibians. He did see some birds as well. And then I didn't even know what to highlight. I thought all of his amphibians were cool, um, but that would have been a lot of red. So uh, we can all choose which ones are are cool to us. Oh, and then additional pictures, Easter Newt on the left and a spotted salamander on the right at the Gates Mills Trailhead by Al Rand. All right, that brings us to Sean Missig's submission. He saw 21 species and visited the reservation five times. Uh, the dates that Sean visited, uh, March 1st, 6th, 14th, 21st, and 28th, um, he says, 
North Chagrin Reservation is somewhere I have not explored enough. In the past, I have visited Squires Castle, but have not seen much else beyond that. With this being our location for March, I now realize just how much I've missed out on all these years. And this time I was ready. For this trip, I finally had the lens I've been wanting for a while now. The Tamron 150 by 600 would give me that extra reach I was looking for and hopefully take my photography to a new level. Each trip I started at Oxbow Lagoon, this area has beautiful scenery and a nice short path to walk on. My trips earlier in the month didn't yield as much as later in the month. However, there was always something to see there. I heard many red-winged blackbirds. However, they were very good at hiding or landing within the reeds or brush where I couldn't get to. They also perched very high in the trees during the early part of the month where they would sit and make their calls for what seemed like hours on end. I saw many red-tailed hawk and turkey vulture fly over while I was there, but I was unable to get any overhead shots due to needing more practice with my new lens. There are always mallards and Canada geese in the larger body of water, and I did happen to find some wood ducks on March 21st. So there's a picture of mallard uh, at Oxbow Lagoon that Sean took on one of his trips. All right, I included here a tufted titmouse on the left and a wood duck on the right at Oxbow Lagoon by Sean Missig. He says, on March 21st, or March 21st also brought me a beaver as well. The beaver was just sitting on a down tree, and at first I wasn't sure if it was an animal or some plants in the water, so I decided to take some pictures of it anyway, and I'm glad I did. This was the first time I was able to photograph a beaver in the wild, and it made my trip. So there's the really cute beaver um, sitting there on the water by some tall grasses at Oxbow Lagoon by Sean. After each stop at Oxbow Lagoon, I then made my way to the North Chagrin Nature Center. This location was a jackpot for me, and it also provided me with three lifers. In the beginning of March, when it was still colder, the bird feeders were still up at the Nature Center. This helped me to capture many of the birds on their approach to the feeders. On March 6th, I captured my first lifer, a male house finch. At first, I was in shock that I had finally seen one, but I quickly got over that so I could continue shooting. The second lifer on March 6th was a sharp-shinned hawk. This one was sitting on a branch and did not move the entire time I was taking its picture. I also saw a common grackle, even though their name has common in it, I have not been able to photograph these birds. There was a large flock perched in a few trees close to the pond at the nature center. These birds are almost chameleon-like in the way that their feathers change from black to almost every other color in the sunlight. Truly a sight to behold. So congratulations, Sean, for your first and second. Um, lifer that was mentioned there and uh, something that I do on these field trips if someone mentions that they got a lifer first time they ever saw or observed the bird I give a lifer award so he got his nice shiny award right here on um, the picture of that beautiful male house finch at North Chagrin Nature Center and that's second lifer award for the sharp shin hawk and then uh, a common grackle on the right at North Chagrin Nature Center by Sean Missig and that's a great picture of the Sharpie with its, its beak open, He's making a call. That's really cool. And then, Sean, I hope you don't mind I did this, but I threw one of my pictures in with yours to illustrate um, some ways to tell the difference between a sharp shin hawk and a juvenile, or a juvenile sharp shin hawk and a juvenile Cooper's hawk. So Sean's picture is on the left there. It's a, another photo he took. The bird is looking straight at us. And then um, a duplicate in my photo that I shared earlier is on the right. So a tip that I included here, a sharp shinned and Cooper's hawk identification is often confusing as the two birds look so similar. However, a key indicator is in the tip of the tail. A sharp shinned hawk has a squared off tail, whereas a Cooper's hawk's a Cooper's hawk tail is more rounded. This difference can be seen whether the bird is perched or in flight. Also in immature hawks, like these two here, a Sharpie will have heavier streaking on the chest that extends down onto the belly, whereas a coop belly will be free of streaking. So just two ways to tell. Um, and when I was doing my research about how, how to distinguish the two hawks, there's um, cautions about all these tips, like usually the case, but not always. So, you know, it, it, it takes a long time to be able to tell the difference. 
especially when you're looking at immature birds um, like these two. And I see people on Facebook get into very heated discussions all the time regarding an ID of whether it's a Sharpie or a Coop. So um, don't feel bad if you ever miss ID one, uh, but there are two tips there that could hopefully help you in a lot of cases. All right, so um, yes, these three lifers were great captures, but the red-winged blackbirds definitely stole the show here. Uh, they were everywhere. Call, did I skip a page? So we have the two lifers. Okay, the next lifer must be coming up on the next page. All right, so yes, these three lifers were great captures, but the red-winged blackbirds definitely stole the show here. They were everywhere, calling back and forth one right after the other, and it was almost the only call you could hear while near the pond. These red-winged blackbirds were much more cooperative, too, as they perched on the reeds and cattails, which made for some spectacular photos. I've always enjoyed photographing these birds on cattails, especially when the wind is blowing and they are rocking back and forth with a cattail. They never seem to let go. And that's a gorgeous picture of a male red winged blackbird at North Chagrin Nature Center by Sean. And two more red winged blackbirds at the Nature Center. And I really like um photos of birds that are captured making the call with their beaks open. And then uh, two more pictures. These are a little farther out so you can get an idea of the surrounding scenery, which I really liked. I thought those were really good photos. And then two more. This is the target species after all, so I'm including all the pictures. <laughs> But uh, the one on the left, I, I really like that picture because it shows how the red-winged blackbird, it, it kind of punches up its, its shoulders as it makes the call, you know, puffs out, um, and, that's, and it flares its tail, and it's just a really cool behavior to witness and, of course, to capture on camera. All right, here it is, the third lifer. So my third lifer came on. Uh, March 21st, and it was an Eastern Phoebe. I saw this bird high up in a tree and noticed that its shape was unknown to me. The tail was longer than any of the songbirds I have seen, but it also didn't appear to be very colorful either. I was able to snap a few shots before someone walked by, before someone walking by scared it away. I wanted to spend all my time at the Nature Center, but I knew that there were miles of trails to explore. So congratulations on your third lifer. That's a great picture of an Eastern Phoebe at the North Chagrin Nature Center. Right, the trails located in the area around the Nature Center were absolutely wonderful. I felt like I was in the middle of nowhere, but everything was still close by. It was quiet and peaceful on my walks, but there was not much life scattered throughout. I did find certain areas that seemed to hold more life than others. Black-capped chickadees, tufted titmice, and white-breasted nuthatches were prevalent in these areas, along with the squirrels and chipmunks. At one point, I was photographing a small flock of nuthatches in the distance, and I caught a very lucky shot. This nuthatch had a seed of some sort and it dropped the seed. It then chased the seed as it was falling next to the tree. I was able to capture this bird reaching for the seed and I didn't even know it until I looked at my pictures on the computer. So there's uh, the pictures of the white breasted nuthatch. He has the seed. He or she has the seed on, in the left picture and then must have flown and then right um, is dropping it. All right. Here is a picture of a great blue heron on the left and a painted turtle on the right at North Chagrin Reservation. And then these are really cool photos. The red-tailed hawk at North Chagrin Reservation by Sean Missig. Okay, it seems to be looking right at the camera and the picture on the left. And then red-bellied woodpecker at North Chagrin Reservation. And then a house sparrow on the left there and a northern cardinal on the right at North Chagrin Reservation. All right, the best trail walk came on March 28th. I decided to walk the trails across from the Nature Center, Museum Trail to Sylvan Loop to Overlook Trail. 
instead of those located behind the Buttermilk Falls Trail to Hickory Fox Loop. So I continued to walk the museum trail until I made it to the Sullivan Loop. This loop trail was shorter but had some wonderful scenery. I then made my way to the Overlook Trail until I made it to the Dinger's Marsh Overlook. I hope I pronounced that right. All right, the view was spectacular here, and I was and I will be coming back to this spot once the green returns to this valley. I also realized that I didn't have my landscape lens with me and I had to take the picture with my phone. Thankfully, they have improved the cameras and phones and I was happy with the shot, but I learned my lesson. Further up the trail, I, further up the trail was a small shelter that had a few benches in it. When I stopped here, the chickadees, titmice, and nuthatches were not afraid of me and almost landed on my lens. This appeared to be a popular spot for people to feed the birds. However, I did not see any seeds at this time. There was one that hatched that stole the show. It landed on a tree close to me and allowed me to take many close-up pictures of it. This was the perfect way to end my journey through the woods. So on the right-hand side there, a picture that Sean mentioned about the overlook at North Sugar and Reservation. I think it, if you took this with your uh, camera phone, it really turned out well. It's very uh, scenic photo. And here's the white breasted nut hatch. They got really close um, at North Sugar and Reservation. All right, and then uh, the bird and species list. Uh, notable species include the red-winged blackbird, of course, wood duck, red-tailed hawk, sharp shin hawk, which was a lifer, eastern bluebird, the lifer house finch, a tree sparrow, and eastern phoebe. The third lifer and then that gorgeous photo on the left there of a male red blackbird at north sugar nature center by sean all right so nancy howell uh, couldn't be here this evening she is conducting um a woodcock watch that we have going on every Wednesday throughout the rest of April. Uh, if you're interested in participating in that event uh, go check out wcaudubon.org website and there's a Woodcock Watch tile. I'm not sure. I know it's by reservation only. I'm not sure if there's any room, but uh, I've heard that they're pretty exciting so far. So anyways, uh, Nancy Howell uh, saw 27 species on her two visits to the reservation. And she says, it has been ages since I've been to North Shore Green Reservation. In my early years of birding as a kid, that was one of the places that I participated in the spring bird walks. At that time, there were no all-purpose trails nor the nature center that is there now. Sunset Pond and Squires Castle were two places I remember. I was able to visit the Oxbow Lagoon area along the Chagrin River two times in March, the 12th and the 16th. One visit happened to be the day after my first COVID vaccine, and I felt kind of blah, but the walk and the bird sighted pepped me up. Plus, I saw a rare bird, Tom Fishburn. Uh, although, I'm not sure how rare, because one of us always manages to see him, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right, the target species for the month was the red-winged blackbird, a den denizen of wetlands, marshes, and wet, brushy areas. My first visit on Friday, March 12th, I was able to find 22 species. The area I covered was the floodplain field, the lagoon area, a walk along the Chagrin River, and crossing the road to loop around another pond. One of the first birds sighted was a pair of wood ducks. It was the female's call, a shrill ooeek that alerted me that the bird was there. Always nice to see. A pair of Canada geese were also on the pond and later others flew over following the Chagrin River. With the water and vegetation, I was sure there would be a lot of red-winged blackbirds, but not this day. I was, able to hear a sing I was able to hear a single bird in the distance and didn't even see it. The walk through the brushy field and by the wetlands of the river did produce morning doves, a flyby killdeer, a couple of woodpecker species, the downy and red belly, a blue jay, a flyby American crow, black cap chickadees, a small flock of American tree sparrows, song sparrows, and northern cardinal. The brushy field is perfect for the latter two species. And so the picture she took of the rare bird, Tom Fishburn, at the Oxbow Lagoon by Nancy Howell. All right, the weedy field had several bird boxes for bluebirds, swallow, and other open area cavity nesters. A male eastern bluebird was singing along the edge of the field not far from a bird box. Perhaps he did attract a female to his territory and the luxury condominium on the lot. 
Uh, the trail heading to the Chagrin River took me along a boardwalk that skirted a beaver marsh with a wonderful complex of dams. What an engineer. That area held mallard, black-capped chickadees, and tufted titmouse, white-breasted nuthatch, American robin, and common grackle. Alas, no red-winged blackbirds. Once along the river, I looked for species that might haunt the habitat. A single red-tailed hawk soared over nice. Uh, coming back from the river and walking around the weedy field, apparently it warmed up enough for the turkey vultures who were probably roosting in the woods across the street. Uh, first one, then a second, and finally six turkey, six turkey vultures circled and soared over the valley and then out of sight. Their shadows crossed the field as they headed on their rounds to find a carry-on breakfast. I like that she put carry-on in quotes. Sort of carrion. <laughs> All right. So, um, and then a photo on the left hand side there, a bird box at the field's edge at North Chagrin Reservation by Nancy Howell. All right. Photos, uh, the Oxbow Lagoon on the left and the Beaver Dam at Oxbow Lagoon on the right by Nancy Howell. So, two very nice um, scenery pictures. Uh, and I, I believe the picture on the left is the left side, and then as you look to the right, as you're seeing it on the boardwalk, that's the, the right picture there. That's kind of how I remember it lined up when I was there for my visit. All right, on Tuesday, March 16th, I made arrangements to meet one of the naturalists and former museum educator whom I had not seen since the COVID restriction. We walked the same trail as I had done the previous visit. The second visit also tallied 22 species with a few different species sighted. Yes, the target species red-winged blackbirds were found with four birds sighted, yay. With the walk right by the Chagrin River and wetlands, Canada geese, mallard, and a single wood duck were found during this visit. This time I added some different species. A couple of rainbow gulls, a bald eagle, and a belted kingfisher flew along the river. That's more like it. Many of the species seen on the first visit were also present during the second. A single pileated woodpecker, not seen or heard during the first visit, called from the wooded area across the road. So no matter when a person visits, you never know what will be seen. It will be interesting to see lists and hear what other field trip participants had. Uh, so she took a picture of looking upriver, the Chagrin River and North Chagrin Reservation. And then um, below is the list of 27 species from the two visits, including the rare bird sighting. Uh, so notable species, the wood duck, killdeer, bald eagle, red-tailed hawk, belted kingfisher, pileated woodpecker, eastern bluebird, American tree sparrow, red-winged blackbird, and of course, Tom Fishburn, you are a, a highlighted species. <laughs> All right. Um, a picture of a nest that was stood the test of time and season by North Chagrin Reservation by Nancy Howell. And I just want to see who all we have attending this evening really quick. Okay. So, oops. doesn't it look like Lisa um, Garbeck was able to make it this evening, so I will cover her slides. Uh, Lisa had 22 species and birded on March 27th. Uh, she says, Saturday morning, March 27th, I started out on the North Chagrin Nature Center trails. My highlight there were the Eastern Phoebes. There was a pair hanging around and flying under the boardwalk. Uh, one perched on a post and sang, hopefully they will begin nest building soon. I found another Phoebe sitting in a tree, wagging its tail and singing near the Buttermilk Falls Bridge. And there's a gorgeous picture of Eastern Phoebe at North Chagrin Nature Center by Lisa Gerbeck. And here she has a red-winged blackbird on the left doing its little hunched up shrug as it's making a call. Very cool behavior. And then a beautiful female red-winged blackbird at North Chagrin Nature Center. Perhaps it paid to go a little later in the month because you can get the females as well. I don't think they were quite in when I visited March 7th. All right, next I visited the Oxbow area. I was excited to check it out because I had never been there before. I had wood ducks fly over a couple times. I love the natural wood added to the edge of the boardwalk along the wetland area. I saw many painted turtles and evidence of beavers in the area. The eastern bluebirds were checking out the boxes on the trail to Old River Farm Picnic area. I found a northern mockingbird in a shrubby area in the field. A kettle of six turkey vultures soared overhead, and belted kingfishers were rattling up and down the river. 
I did find a neat plant that I had never seen before along the river bank. The stem had pink flowers that were really attracting the pollinators. I added it to my iNaturalist account and it came up as Butterbur. I was disappointed to learn it was not a native plant. It is in the daisy family and native to Europe and Northern Asia. As I headed back toward my car, I passed the wetlands again and saw a great blue heron fishing for lunch. And on the left hand side, another gorgeous photo of Eastern Bluebird on the trail to Old River Farm picnic area of sitting on top of a nesting box. My two photos here, the Northern Mockingbird on the left and a Great Blue Heron on the right at Oxbow Lagoon by Lisa Gerbeck. And then here's her bird list. Notable species include Wood Dock, Belted Kingfisher, Eastern Phoebe, Northern Mockingbird, Eastern Bluebird, and of course the Red Winged Blackbird. And then a photo of the Butterbur, the non-native species, and Oxbow Lagoon. And Tom, Fishburn, this uh, takes us to your slides. Um, I don't know if you, you usually like to try it. <laughs> uh, what I did was I took your email and I think I added in one part. I added in a, a caption from one of your photos. So do you, do you want to do it or do you want me to cover your slides? Uh, yeah, I'll give it a try. Okay. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time. Um, hadn't been there in, in a while that I spent much time and it's I'd never before taken the time to explore the Oxbow Lagoon area um, although I've driven by it and it got my attention when I went by um, so I did want to spend more time so I was happy that that you picked this uh, to do and um, I was surprised how much there was as far as the, the trails that go back and uh, how big that lagoon really was so I, I did find that boardwalk and um, I was there a little bit before, well, more than an hour before Nancy showed up. Nancy came on that same day um, on March 12th, and she, she didn't. I was surprised she didn't get any red winged blackbirds. It's a pure one. I, I had several. Um, I guess they disappeared, but uh, we both heard the bluebirds um, when, we, when we got there, and I was real happy to get the pictures of, of the bluebirds. But on the 12th, and I was surprised on the 25th, I did not see any. Um, any bluebirds um, and um, the red-tailed hawk um, uh, same one really that uh, Nancy mentioned I think well, I saw it twice I think I saw it on my, my first walk because I went back and forth um, and um, did see the, the red-tailed hawk that uh, Nancy talked about as well and um, yeah as soon as I drove in there actually I, I, there, was a, there were wood ducks over across the road um, but they flew real quick, and uh, so Nancy and I had both on the 12th um, uh, knew there were wood ducks around anyway, but they were very hidden. But it was on the 25th that weren't so hidden, and that was that was real special on the 25th to see the wood ducks flying over, and um, and I caught that pileated woodpecker as well. Um, so, um, but I did get uh, I love photographing the. The bluebirds and I got both the male and the female there so that was that was fun so, um, let's go to the next one more bluebirds how about that now I do like I do like photographing bluebirds as you can see um, I think the one on the left there was uh, posed real nice kind of out in the water I think that's the one uh, it flew out there that was a little further away but uh, I just kind of liked it on the wood but I just really enjoyed them. Uh, these, these might be all the same male, but I think there were more more than just the male female pair. Uh, so I'm not real sure. Uh, next slide. And there's the hawks. Yep, the red tailed hawks. I don't know if they were the same. I don't actually think they were the same one. The markings are, are a bit different, unless it was the light. But um, yeah, one of those was on my earlier uh, hike that day before Nancy showed up, and then I got one. Um, when she was around too. They were both, I believe, on the same day that March uh, 12th is. Next slide. Aha! Uh, this is what was fun. Um, picture on the left, I, I arrived on March 25th, parked, I was getting my camera gear ready and ready to start hiking and I saw something flash um, into the woods across the street and, and way across that um, 
lagoon area. I actually think behind that wood duck there is Squire's Castle. Um, but uh, I was able to um, just walk across the street and get a distant shot of it uh, uh, perched in that tree. It was pretty high up and pretty far, but I was able to get uh, get a good shot despite the distance. And then um, I, there was a bunch of activity. They were flying overhead. But every time they landed, they would end up um, you know, kind of hidden in that in that lagoon behind everything. Uh, let's see what you got next. And then the pillion, yeah. Um, that came out of nowhere, and um, I was fortunate. I was my settings on my camera were decent enough that I could just shoot, and um, I got several pictures of that um, as it flew over um, from the trees in the north side of the lagoon towards Squire's Castle, where that was heading. So, so that was a real treat. Next slide. Now, we'll, well, actually, the middle photo I got, that was a uh, um, downy woodpecker um, at Oxbow, um, as well as, the, yeah, the song sparrow, too, was uh, posing for me there. Um, I guess all these, that's right, This all these are at Oxbow. I forgot the one on the left, the chickadee there, was uh, just particularly friendly, um, real close. And it was kind of like checking me out as if maybe he was thought I might have had something to give it, but uh, didn't stick around too long, but it was uh, long enough to get that picture. So yeah, all those three were at the at the Oxbow, and um, I believe on March 12th, the first visit there. Next slide. Aha, uh -huh. yep, on March 25th. Um, yeah, after I left um, Oxbow, I drove down the road there to the um, Old River Farm picnic area. And I heard it. Um, I was at my car, um, and I heard it. Um, and uh, there's a like pavilion there, and um, so I walked. It was on the other, just on the other side of the pavilion, and um, so I kind of walked slowly to, because uh, I wasn't sure how close it was and where, where exactly. And so I get towards um, the end of the pavilion there, and there it's sitting there, really nice for me. And um, so that was the first. Um, of the year for me. Um, actually, I heard of Phoebe, uh, probably more by, by Oxbow that, that same day. Um, and um, so anyway, that day were, were my first Phoebes of the of the season this year. So that was that was nice. They're, they're a good bird. And, uh, it was pumped up its tail as it usually does, and um, posing around. It flew flew around a little bit after that. My, came back to the same tree, but that was a picture I really liked. So next slide. Hi, ah, yeah, and then um, a real, probably one of the biggest surprises um, was uh, when I went back on the 25th over the Sunset Pond, and there was all kinds of noise. And um, this is the second time this year I, I came across a flock of uh, rusty blackbirds. And the first time was at um, Sandy Ridge, maybe a couple of weeks before that. Um, and there were a bigger, bigger flock of Sandy Ridge. But even here, I, I figured there was maybe 15 of them. And they, they were making enough of a racket. And they didn't stay too long. Um, probably they were able to get some shots off and um, before, they, before they took off. So I was happy about that. And then the feeders... Was, was certainly an area to, to really enjoy. So there you got a female cardinal that I thought was quite pretty and um, was nice on one of the railings there. And um, yeah, the red winged blackbirds are fun to photograph. And um, and then the bandits, I don't know if you put any pictures of the bandits in there. I see. did. I put them in there. Let's see what you got. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the blackbirds are pretty neat. Um, so the, the one there at the feeder, well, actually both of them at the feeder, one on uh, the railing, the one eating, looking right at me. They're not my favorite pictures of the blackbirds, so I don't know if we got any more, but uh, I thought they were pretty good, too. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, then the chickadees at the feeder. A couple black cat chickadees. Okay, what you got next? Uh, 
uh, I got a the hatch as well hanging around. And uh, yeah, the goldfinch show uh, was it's interesting to see their uh, plumage change. So that one's uh, molting back into its uh, more uh, colorful breeding plumage. Yeah, what's next? Uh, the bandits. These are more bandits. Yeah, the two of them. That was funny to see both of them um, at the feeder, the chipmunk and the, uh, the red squirrel. They were, they were chowing down. They were, they were either on the ground or up on the on that uh, feeder tray there. And the um, main reason why they're cropped so close is because um, I had to shoot through that uh, railing that was in front of it. But uh, they were close anyway. But uh, cute little critters. But they were, um, I guess the birds don't mind too much sharing their, their food with them. And what else you got? I think that was that was it for your section. Um, okay. Thank you for all of those gorgeous photos. You you always do such a great job, and I'm so thankful to have had your participation since the beginning. Um, really helped contribute to this presentation. So thank you, and thank you to everyone. Uh, big thank you to Lisa Gerbic, Al Rand, Sean Missig, Nancy Howell, and of course Tom Fishburn. And a, a great big thank you to the Cleveland Metro Parks for the North Chagrin Reservation. So uh, just a, a couple of locations here if you're interested in, in visiting. The North Sugar Nature Center is located at 401 Buttermilk Falls Parkway in Mayfield Village. Uh, the Oxbow Lagoon doesn't have an address that I was able to find, but it is located just south of Squires Castle off Chagrin River Road. And I included the address there for Squires Castle. So if you put that in your GPS, um, just know that it's a little south of the castle. All right, so please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. I just go to that website that I listed there, and there is a virtual field trip 2021 tile on the home page. Click that, and it will take you to um, all, all the virtual field trips that we have coming up. So this month, the month of April, um, I am inviting birders to go to um, Lucia F. Nash Preserve in Geauga County. So it just opened last summer. It is managed by the Ohio Nature Conservancy. There is no eBird data yet for April, or there is now, because I'm sure people have been going and eBirding. Um, but so go and, and eBird or just go and enjoy the location and let me know what you think and I can include your submission in this uh, presentation like this. Uh, also one last thing, we are on Instagram. We're on I think every social media platform out there, um, but I uh, am an admin on the WC Autobahn Instagram page and if you are a bird photographer and you post your picture, please use hashtag WC Audubon uh, to be considered for a chance to be featured by our organization. I always um, will we'll share the picture that I'll have you send to me. If, if When I reach out to you, you'll, I'll include my email for you to send the picture to me. I'll include a fun fact or interesting fact about the bird, and then I'll, of course, tag you on the post so that um, other people can can check out more of your work. So with that, that is the end of the presentation, but I would like to open it up now for uh, discussion. So does anyone have anything that they want to say about um, anything that was shared today, any questions I ask. We have Sean here and Tom and myself. If you have any questions on our sections, um, I'm opening the floor now. Hey, Michelle, this is Sean. Hi, Sean. I wanted to, hi, I wanted to say that um, I visited the Nature Center again this past weekend and a very unfortunate event has occurred the overlook over the marsh there, um, the overlook itself was built around a couple of trees and one of those trees fell down into the valley. So it has destroyed at least half of that overlook. They have it completely marked off. You cannot get onto it at all. Um, and that was on Sunday I was there. So I don't know if they've made any progress or if they're in a 
planning stage as to if they want to rebuild or what they're going to do, but it is no longer accessible. You can get down close to it, but pictures aren't the same. Oh, no. Well, thank you for that heads up. Are you talking about the overlook? And I also – oh, go ahead. Is that the overlook off the Sylvan Loop? Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I also wanted to say thank you for including the um, difference there between the Cooper's Hawk and the Sharp Shin because, uh, yeah, they, they look very, very similar, and uh, those are very good tips to know. So I appreciate that. No problem. Yeah, I think I, I mentioned I see people – there's a, a few different Facebook groups about, you know, bird identification. I see people argue all the time <laughs> on, on what, which one it is. They're so very similar, those two birds, and I, e even an expert could get them confused. So those are just some tips I found, and hopefully they help for the majority of the time you'll see one. Michelle, this is Kathy. I also appreciate those tips. I was at Acacia Reservation today, this early afternoon, and mm -hmm. I saw three hawks there, which I thought were Cooper's hawks, but now that you give me gave the tips, they may actually be the oh. sharp shin. Oh, and fantastic. Did you, get any, did you get any images or any pictures that you could go back and compare? I have pictures of two of them. One of them okay. I didn't get, but I saw that one in flight. Okay. And actually, could I email them to you? Oh, absolutely. Well, actually, yeah. no, I couldn't email. I'd have to text you. Okay. Yeah. I can, um, I'll put my, do, do you want to text them to me? I can put my phone number in the chat. I don't mind. Yeah, sure. Let me just make sure I'm getting Also, I had an in interesting experience last Friday. I was out at Sandy Ridge. Um, there's a pair of eagles on the nest. So there's eagles, or I didn't see any heads of little eaglets yet, but it's hard to tell uh, with that nest. But there was also a pair of juveniles that were flying around, and the male was chasing away the juveniles. It was very interesting. Oh, that is interesting behavior. All right, anything, anything else? I also want to give a tip um, for this month's location. Bring the longest lens you've got. Oh, no. Because, <laughs> I don't well, have I mean, <laughs> well, well that, that, I, I only say that because when I've been there, a lot of the action that I've noticed has been on the other side of the lake. Um, mm. And I have found that, you know, my lens all the way out at 600, I'm getting good shots and decent shots that I really don't need to crop. I can definitely crop if I wanted to, but they look pretty good as they are. Um, I would say 400 millimeter would probably be the lowest you'd want to go. Uh, the trails, they do have uh, many little birds flying around, um, the, the typical songbirds. And I believe I found some kinglets as well, but couldn't get a picture because they were just hopping from branch mm -hmm. to branch like crazy. They do um, move quickly, it is, yeah. Yes, it is a very beautiful area. Um, the first time I went there, I actually sat on the dock for about two hours and got a major sunburn, so it was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> that was good. And I also saw a yellow-bellied sapsucker the last time I was there, so oh, that was definitely I'm a highlight so... for me. Happy. Yeah, I think did it was isn't that one of the target birds? I know I made a sandhill crane, I and I think, think that one. Okay. I think it I might be. Um, that one was hanging out right by the parking area, uh, so that that was an immediate catch. Um, and the trail to the right, which I forget what they called it. I think maybe just a woodland trail or something, but. That one, it's a very nice trail, but I did not find very much on it. So okay. that's more of a, an enjoyable walk than it is picture taking. But it's a very, very wonderful place. I, I love it, and I'll be going back for sure. Okay. Thanks for those tips. I haven't been out yet. I plan to go hopefully this weekend. Um, 
and I've, I've never been to the location before, which is why I made it a <laughs> virtual field trip location so that it would be go out there and, and finally see it. But I've been interested ever since I heard of it opening last summer, and I've been wanting to go. And I think they actually shut it down over the winter. I think it was closed and just opened up this month again. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to my visit. Now, do they have a trail around? Because you said all the action is on the other side of the lake. Is there a trail that goes back there? Or is it kind of off limits? If there is any type of trail, it's not off of any of the main trails. Um, okay. And people that I had talked to that I had seen while I was there, they didn't mention anything about, oh, if you walk around here, you can get back there or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I didn't see anything. So if there is something, chances are it's either private property or, okay. or not something or we want to take. part of the preserve, yeah, it's somewhere they don't want you to go so they can preserve the, the land. Yeah, okay. Thank you for those tips. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I hope to get out this weekend and, and see it for myself. And hopefully uh, everything will be a little closer because I have a 100 to 400 lens. So your, what you suggested as a minimum is my max. <laughs> So hopefully it'll be okay with my camera. If not, I'll be really relying on the shots that you and Tom take <laughs> to carry the presentation um, for sure. All right. Any Anything else before we wrap up this call today? No, Janet Lloyd, um, I, I think that she left, but she chatted. I enjoyed my visit to the Nature Center. Hope to visit one day. Uh, the warblers are on the way. Had a northern perula today. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, I'm really excited. I, I saw um, the the what are they called? Yellow rumped warblers. They're they're back for sure. I've seen a couple of those, and I know that I've I've been hearing about warblers popping up here and there. So they're on their way. It'll, it'll be the exciting time of year pretty soon for birding. All right. Well, if that's it, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kathy, for attending. Thank you to Sean and Tom uh, for going out to the um, to the reservation and providing such wonderful photos and journaling. And thank you to Betsy for um, handling the technical side of this evening. So thank you to all. And I will see you hopefully next month. Have a good evening. Thank you. This was interesting. <laughs>